Welcome to What's Wrong There. I'm architect Paruman Nagapushnu. Today, the pandemic is ravaging and raging. Expected, our lockdown has failed with 11,000 cases per day. Many have called the Prime Minister to step down as he is sick. The country is lamenting with white flag and black flags. The nation is suffering. Everyone is in pain. Today, we have a guest. He is Professor Tajuddin. Professor Tajuddin does not need needs no introduction. He is outspoken from UCSI. He is a prophetic writer, award-winning author, recently awarded for critical thinking. There's no more suitable person than Professor Tajuddin to discuss who will be the suitable candidate for the interim prime minister. Welcome, Professor Tajuddin. Uh, today, as our prime minister is not well, and with few leaders at the helm, our nation is at the worst in solving the pandemic and the leaders are often uh, beset with corruption. Professor, welcome. Thank you. Professor, if you were next to the Agong and the Agong sought for your advice, who among the leaders will you advise? We have uh, Rafida Aziz, Tommy Thomas, Said Sadiq, Haji Awang, Gobin, Gobin Singh, Gwon Eng, Rafizi, Vika Siong, uh, Vignesh Swaran, Anis Yusuf. And so what do you think, uh, Professor? Who will best fit the role as an interim prime minister to take us to the elections? Rosalie was uh, one of the uh, candidates. I think um, as much as I don't like to put any politician or former politician uh, like uh, Rafida Aziz and even to the certain extent to Kurazale, um, uh, we, of course, have politicians like uh, you know, Said Sadi and you know, all that. But uh, it, it, the fact remains that Malaysia is like a very, very old institution full of this Malay uh, kind of a norm of doing things. Very, very, very Malay because it has been Malay-oriented for so many, uh, so many years. That's not just Malay. It's very Amno-oriented. It has a certain way of its uh, uh, doing things. I'm not talking just about politicians, eh? I'm talking about civil servant uh, Najib. And then I think when Najib did not do the things that he wanted to perhaps uh, pro propagate his legacy, you know, the, uh, uh, then he, uh, he started his uh, way of trying to dismantle uh, Najib. And uh, that worked in line with the Pakatan Harapan. And then we saw Rafida coming to the fore. And that was the time when she started making speeches I knew that she and Mahate, uh, you know, synchronous in their in their thoughts. Um, uh, so, are they trying to save Malaysia? I don't really think so. Uh, I think they are trying to save whatever legacy that they had left uh, in terms of uh, whatever private dealings that they had. Um, so this is uh, quite quite certain. Uh, when we see that Mahathir coming back into power, he first thing appointed, uh, I think, Rapida and a few others to be, what do you call it, uh, the elders, uh, elder or, or some sort of uh, advisors, things like that. And some say these people have more power than the cabinet. So the cabinet of Pakatan Harapan is a poor excuse for, uh, I mean, they are, they are good people, but then they were made into little boys and little girls uh, under the Mahathir uh, punya playbook. So, so, uh, you, so yeah. are, you, are you recommending uh, Rafida Aziz or not? Uh, no, definitely not because then she will be the mouthpiece of Mahathir and, and weave their, their power structure back into, into um, she would use, she would probably use that as, a, as an opportunity uh, to, to build back their power structure. I mean, that, that's the first rule of uh, politics which uh, doesn't really care much about the people. Uh, let's, let's imagine that the meritocracy is now in, in place and the king mm -hmm. says, let's be non-political as well. Would you consider uh, advising Tommy Thomas? Okay, the, the rest of the names that you have put up there, they have their own capabilities and all that. Uh, but as I said just now, this is a Malay, uh, Malay, Malay structure. I mean, this is mostly Malay. The civil, civil servant uh, has been turned into a Malay institution. Okay, that, that, that is undeniable. It wasn't supposed to be like that. I, I heard uh, narratives by Dr. Teh Gee that uh, in order to give the Dasa economy baru, then the idea was the trade-off, what they call the social contract. 
you know, uh, so that the uh, civil servants will be balanced, you know, uh, with uh, Malays and non-Malays and all that. But I don't know what happened. Um, somewhere along the line, everything became Malay. I mean, so this is a, it's a totally Malay thing. And so if you're looking at Tommy Thomas and uh, with due respect to his ability and all that, but uh, I don't think so. Same thing with Said Sadiq being very young, uh, although he's Malay, but he's a new Malay. It doesn't uh, because as I said, it's a, um, it's a, it's a Malay um, power structure uh, within the civil uh, servant. He has to command civil servant. And uh, I don't think he'll be able to do it. Okay. Um, he might be able to appoint certain Malay personalities uh, to help him with that. That, that, that could work. Uh, but still, uh, the minds of the Malays, remember the, the, when Lim Guan Eng was appointed and also um, Tommy Thomas was appointed, there was a so-called he went cry as if uh, this is the end of the world for Malays. I mean, that's how they think. I don't think like that. Well, so but, in other uh, words, uh, would, uh, would you say that the, the, the powers of these, uh, these uh, Malay, Malay extreme groups is it real or is it an imaginary thing that Mahathir uh, complies? Okay, the so-called Malay extreme group, actually, uh, I, I feel, is actually a, a, a paid uh, entity. Okay, they were paid. Uh, there are some Islamic NGOs that I don't see them helping the poor, whatever. They are. Their role is just to come up with issues. And they are, they are surviving, they're paid very well by somebody. I'm, I'm just assuming, I'm not going to name names. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, uh, the other Malay, like Prakasa, you know, they were set up my Mahathir, remember? And uh, they are also uh, wanting to agitate people so that they become relevant. You see, if people like Malays who, are, who, are going, who have already gone to universities really read books, uh, really, uh, they're not educated. They just went. So, so here is the situation when you say that uh, there are extremist group. Actually, extremist group is not really the the issue here. The issue here is the middle class Malays, and the issue here is also the civil servant who are Malays. All are not really. All have the same narrative of their so-called unlearned fathers or forefathers in the so-called kampung in the days when they said they worry about the Malay. Uh, punya, uh, the, the Malay punya so-called survival and, and, and worrying about it becoming like Singapore, this narrative is the same. I, I, I've, I've seen I've seen it. I've been with professors. I've been with so-called people who have uh, the highest learning. And they are so entrenched within this, uh, this perspective. This is something which people fail uh, to understand on Malays. Uh, they, they think it's extremist group like Hadi Awang. No. It is the, now the dokongi oleh uh, apa nama, what we call the, the Malay middle class and upper middle class uh, that is actually, actually having it. So it's very difficult for you to move in a very totally Malay. Uh, I'm not using, as I said, it's not about race Malay. It's the mindset of uh, being uh, a Malay first and Malaysia number five or something like that. Um, so, so, so that's why Tommy Thomas and those others who are like Lim Guan Eng cannot, uh, cannot and will not survive uh, in this uh, 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 machinery and uh, of the governance and government uh, all the way from the federal top to the local level to the local council. Uh, it will never work. So that is why the name of such person like Tengku Razale was uh, muted by Zaid Ibrahim my friend Dr. Anis Yusal, and they gave uh, some sort of a high regard for, for him being a tokoh Melayu. Okay, and he in fact is not a Mahathir person like what Rafida is. And when I think about it, I, I, would, I, would, I would support that idea. So Professor, coming to the reality in the ground, that is the mm -hmm. environment that forged uh, who the Prime Minister or the Interim Prime Minister will be, uh, um, so, so left with just uh, a few others, right? We have Rafida Aziz, who you have, you know, turned down completely. What about uh, Rafizi? What about Sai Sedek? What about mm -hmm. uh, the, the name you propose, Dr. Anis? How do these people? How do these people uh, will forge out a new new leadership? Um, yeah. Is there, is there any okay, opportunity? Uh, 
mm-hmm. for them to come out and do well at this time, solve the pandemic yes, problem, uh, solve the economic problem, solve the corruption problem, solve mm-hmm. the judiciary problem. Uh, are these people capable of leading leading the harsh environment that we already in? If there was a virus that came to this country and struck down all the veteran AMNO like Tajuddin and Zahin and all that, and suddenly they all you know disappear. Yes, that would be my answer in one sense. But then also you you also have to eliminate the 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 first, second, and third tier of all the civil servants, the police and the the military, everything. You know you have to start at the third tier and then build up and then it's possible but of course that is an impossibility it's a fantasy so so people like Rafizi 100% talented I have no issue with that he is also a Malay and he also understands uh, quite a bit of things but uh, he will be fish out of water you know in the in the in the construct of uh, present you know civil servants eh? we have uh, we have uh, um, over-treated them to think that they themselves are, are little emperors. And you go to their building, you look at the building, their building, I mean architecture, you look at the building, building is incredible. And when you want to go there, you can't even find parking. Okay? Why is it that you can't find parking inside the building in which you are to be served? You, you are the citizen of this country and that building is meant to serve you. But no, we have said that building is for us. That's so why I use the analogy of you having a very big bungalow and employ 10 servants. Suddenly, you one day you come home, servants close the gate and say, you cannot come in because this is untuk kaki tangan parking saja dalam dalam uh, dalam rumah. Your own house. Okay? So, you are paying them and they won't allow you in to park your car. See, forget. Uh, then it, I always make this analogy. If you were to go to Tesco, you know, I've been to some Tesco. Um, I, uh, the workers are not allowed to park under the cover. You know, they are supposed to park outside because those under the cover are for the customers. So they treat customers very, very well because without customers, they, they will close down, right? So same thing here with the uh, government. They forget that without the rakyat to pay the taxes, to pay their salaries, and also for them to do the service, they are out of work. But they say that no, no, this is our right. Okay, uh, we are the now the landowners. Okay, like the municipal council, they think that they are landowners. They are not landowners. They are just doing this for the people under the democracy. Okay. okay. So for that reason, that it's difficult to see uh, any new talent. So, professor, uh, uh, having said that, having said all this, uh, the dire situation that we are in, the kind of uh, second tier leaders that have not been groomed to face this um, this difficult world huh? so what who who is left behind I, I think i think i think you 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 really need a person who who consciously understand that you have to change into a uh, into a new future I, I don't know but i think anwar ibrahim uh, could be the person uh, to initiate the change with Perhaps, hopefully, I pray <laughs> to Kura Zaleh. But uh, Kura Zaleh being an old politician, uh, uh, as I said, he he uh, he doesn't have any uh, um, any people following him and things like that at the moment. Uh, but then he could actually rebuild his base. You have to watch this uh, first, second, third tier leaders. Uh, let them have a nice pension and uh, gratuity and say goodbye and maybe close their their <laughs> corruption cases you know and then only uh, build up the third the third uh, the third tier of leadership into uh, more, more god consciousness in, in terms of islam and malay and also then move in a few more uh, start to build up the multiracial uh, thing. You could even start with Bumi Putra. If you want to go with Bumi Putra, then you get in the Kadazan or the Morut, uh, 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 those who are educated, put them in the Malaysian federal federal situation instead of letting them, you know, uh, way back there. How many Sabahan or Sarawakan, Sarawakian uh, punya orang you have in the federal? 
Uh, really you know that. Pro mm -hmm. Professor Tajuddin, do you really think that uh, Anwa will be able to step up as he as he required? But the last time when he was required mm -hmm. to step up, when the dilemma was uh, at his at his height, in mm -hmm. fact, uh, he failed. He he moved backward to pick up uh, Mahate as a lead again. So he 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 was not there as a leader. You think he'll be mm -hmm. able to lead us anytime in the future? Okay. Uh, you see, in AMNO, there are two kinds of leaders. One, they are visionary, a leader who are visionary. Mm -hmm. uh, these are Tun Mahathir, Anu Ibrahim, people like Toraza. Uh, I don't know much about Tun Hussein On. Tukar Abdul Rahman, okay, lah, he's the, the first and all that. Then there are the Gurkhas. Okay, the Gurkhas are those people who do the rafting, the soldiers. They are the soldiers, the foot soldiers. So when you have leaders like Mahate or you have the leaders like Tun Abdul Raza, then then uh, you also have the the, the 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 rank and file, okay. So what we have we are seeing now is that the rank and file are now holding the positions. I mean, imagine you have people like Tajuddin, Ahmad Maslan, uh, all these. Uh, sometimes you can even call them jokers, you know, because they really don't have any vision. All they do is make noise. Make traps. So, so, so that that's why I, uh, I think Anu Ibrahim shows great leadership uh, in terms of his. Uh, I mean, some people say he could have left the country, but he said no. You know, he wants to fight it off, and I wouldn't be the man to actually stay in prison for six six years. Uh, he also chose to not forgive, but work with somebody like Mahathir, who had done him so much wrong and was never remorseful and never apologetic. But uh, he saw uh, the importance, even to the point of arguing with his daughter. People see this as weakness. I see this as strength, the strength to forgive. And he always says that. No, we, we, uh, so Anis was the chairman, was elected chairman. And then uh, he was also the integrity. I also met him before that as integrity. Sometimes I see the civil servant, uh, the civil servant. Uh, you know, but then when I began to see, uh, to read some of his articles and column, he's a columnist for Sinar Haryan. And we get to know each other. Uh, he, he told me that he had once uh, presented several times the integrity uh, guidelines and even argued with ministers. And the fact we, we have a number of tops. Huh? We are world best in corruption yes. <laughs> or among the rank. Um, Definitely. Right now, a pandemic, we are among the best, uh, in the worst mm. of, um, you know, mm. with, with 11,000 cases, I think we are. Uh, 10 times worse off than India. Uh, mm -hmm. We, uh, you know, we're not doing very well, isn't it? Eh? So, I mean, it, given these harsh conditions, eh, uh, that things are very harsh eh, in, the, in the political environment that uh, makes very harsh judgments on, on, on go, that goes along racial lines. Yes, we are, we are, we are racial. Will we ever see a time in the future, the next few years, uh, a change in the way we think? Given the failure of the the, the Malay leadership, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't really see any hope for Malaysia. And that's why I wrote the article. No hope for Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I meant was that the Malaysia that we have set up in terms of our political system, mm -hmm. in terms of our civil uh, civil judiciary and all these things, uh, to change them is a it's a, it's, it's a monumental task uh, because first you have to have someone with a will to change. And I think Anwar has that, but even he uh, may not succeed if he doesn't have the, uh, the people who actually, you know, can be put part of the change. Um, but then he was never given a chance. Okay, so, so we will never know. And uh, the fact that Amno always says, no Anwar, no DAP, uh, you know, it's something for you to actually think about. Why, why is it that the one I'm not is I'm, I'm, Anua uh, has uh, billions and billions of ringgit stashed somewhere, or is Anua uh, you know kill uh, twenty percent? So what? Why? Why so throw? You know. Uh, so so this no Anua no DAP how how come? Because Anua may not be as corrupt as all these people and knows all their skeletons. Mm. Okay, so so that's why it's no Anwar and no DAP. And if Anwar, you know, had to make deals with uh, some of these people in order to make sure that uh, he establishes himself, I'm saying that 
as a political strategy that uh, I would accept. And that uh, some people say, oh, how come you work with Najib and all that? Well, this is, if you want to see some change, then the transition period has to be, uh, I wrote a long time ago, no, I, I gave a speech at the Singapore. I said, this country cannot change until, uh, unless UMNO is part of a government with, you know, uh, PH and all that. It, 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 it has to be. Because they, they hold, now we, we have past coming up very strong with all this Islamic thing and all that, very, very uh, conservative. Uh, so the more so that you would need a new a new kind of, I, I try to write about that, that Amno can rejuvenate itself. Mm -hmm. But Amno is full of Tajuddin Abdul Rahman, and full of uh, Zahid Samidis and who are, who are of the old lot. You have people like Shahrin, who's not painted yet, you know, Shahrin, the, the Bermuda, and uh, Ashraf, I don't think he's, uh, <laughs> he's going to be one of those uh, or a lama. He's already on that path. So, Professor, you, you really do believe that, that there's no hope in this uh, country's future because the whole uh, system is system is corrupt, isn't it? Huh? Mm -hmm. Now, let's let's look at, uh, if, if you have some glimmer of hope on Anwar Ibrahim, what about him uh, in alliance with uh, Said Siddiq and Rafizi? Will then that be a little bit of a brighter uh, future? Yes, it is. it is, but it's still not enough. It's been proven during the Pakatan Harapan in your time mm -hmm. uh, that the Malays, uh, because of the DAP, somehow, if the new, if they, let's say Anwar can uh, take power, then I, I will have to suggest that, sorry, lah, even though the AP have a lot of capable people, uh, then they may have to be a bit sidelined by not having uh, the major uh, the major post and all that, you know, because it's not time yet. And uh, and so these other people will have to be, uh, you know, it's a point this. Uh, uh, in, in the interest of time, we, we just mm -hmm. have a few minutes left. Uh, okay. Can you just sum up? Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. If you were visited, called upon by the Agong and asked mm. for an advice of all mm. this situation that we are in, mm. who are the two, three top leaders that you will choose? Who would you choose? Uh, three top leaders? Yes. Yeah, Tunku uh, Razale. Definitely uh, Dr. Anis Yusal and definitely uh, Rafizi uh, should be roped in into the prey. It cannot be Anwar Ibrahim because you can't have two leaders. You know, uh, these are two alphas, so so you, you can't have that. I would put Anwar, but then, you know, um, it's it's really not not the time for him because of uh, uh, the, the malayness around is uh, something that is different. And uh, so Tengku Razaleh, definitely, I agree with Zaid as well. Um, so these are the three I would definitely put the name to, to Ago. Okay, thank you, Professor. Now let's wind up. I got a, a surprise question for you. I didn't tell oh, you that. Surprise. I thought that was a surprise question. Okay. okay. How would you best describe in one word the following leaders? Okay, I'm going to put the names. One, one word uh, from my yes. perspective. Yes, uh, you got to be quick hmm. at this. Huh? Rafida yeah. Aziz. Untrustworthy. Hmm. Uh, Tommy Thomas. Um, um, you got to find the words. Uh, Tommy Thomas, uh, a word to describe him. Yes. Um, this is very difficult. <laughs> um, uh, well, we could call it naive. La. Naive, okay. Said Sadiq. Said Sadiq, uh, energetic. Oh, sorry, dynamic. Yeah. Hadi Awang. Uh, Adi Awang is a. Is now I would call it a, what's the word charlatan? Gobind Singh. Gobind Singh, uh, we would say he's uh, courageous. Guan Eng. Guan Eng. Uh, uh, what is the word for strength? Eh? Um, <laughs> is the word strong? Okay. Is that okay? Strong. Rafizi. Sorry, strong. Oh, Rafizi, uh, hmm, strategy. We Kasyong. We Kasyong. Um, uh, we Kasyong is a politician. Witness, Warren. 
Hmm? Weakness Warren. <laughs> Weakness Warren. Um, opportunist. Lah. Anis Yusuf. Uh, Anis uh, Yusuf. Uh, integrity. Okay, thank you. Mm. Well, we come to the end of our discussion. Thank you very much for mm. your opinion. And I think <laughs> we learned a great okay, from this discussion and uh, there is a lot more we have to do in Malaysia. So signing yes. off, what's wrong out there? Parumal Nagapushnam, mm. thank you.